Good morning, everybody, and thanks very much for attending today's webinar. Just to let you know, we are recording this session. Um, so my name is John McDonough. I'm the sales leader for the UK and Western Europe. And I'm just going to go run you through the agenda, and then we're going to commence the webinar. So today's agenda, first and foremost, it's going to be a, an overview of Constellation Consulting Group. Then I'm going to hand over to Andy King, from Oracle, he's the director of EPM product management. And then last but not least, I'm gonna hand you over to Hassan, who's one of Constellation Consultant Group's EPM managers, and he's gonna run you through our ESG demo. So today's demo aim is to show you all that Oracle EPM Cloud for the ESG is a perfect fit. So just to give you a bit of an overview, Constellation Consulting Group, we've been going for over 18 years. We're headquartered out of the UAE, and we've got an office in the UK, Turkey, India, Egypt, Lebanon, and soon to be the US. With regards to the UK, this is our hope for Western Europe. Um, we've launched here three months ago, and we've got three team members, and over the coming months, we are looking to make strategic hires across the Banalux and DAC regions as well. Um, as you can see here in bold, um, we do have advanced level Oracle EPM service and expertise certification, which I will go on to in the next slide. As, a part, as an Oracle partner, EPM partner, we cover the full suite of Oracle EPM cloud. We offer advisory, health checks, implementation, um, managed service, and also we do have some infrastructure clients as well. We cover performance management, plan and budget and forecasting, financial consolidation and close and reporting, accounts for reconciliation, profitability and cost management, and tax reporting. Uh, most recently, um, for TRCS, we completed an implementation, the first one in the Middle East, which covered the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. <clears throat> As I touched on in the previous slide, we were the first partner in the world to achieve advanced service expertise for Oracle EPM Cloud. So what does this mean? So to gain this certification, um, Constellation have had to do conduct 10 projects a year, EPM Cloud projects, and we've had to gain a minimum of eight out of 10 for customer satisfaction. So what this means is that we have 10 happy customers who are happy to reference both Constellation and the power of EPM Cloud on an annual basis. And we've held this for the past two years. So this is a really, you know, a, a really, great thing for Oracle, Constellation, and the whole EPM community. Um, and for our customers in the future, as well as our current customers, you know that they're getting the highest level of service from Constellation. <clears throat> Just to give you a bit of an overview, as some people might, might be new to Constellation, we've successfully delivered the largest EPM projects across ECMEA. We have 150 consultants. We are the largest consult EPM consultancy firm in ECMEA. We have global delivery experience. We've delivered multiple major turnaround EPM projects. This is where we've gone in um, and sort of saved the project halfway through from another partner. Um, we've got 100% referenceability uh, across the full EPM suite. So as you can see here, we do cover multiple industries, automotive, financial services, energy, group companies, manufacturing. So within manufacturing, we cover food, uh, cable, health and wellness. Um, we also do telco media, real estate, oil and gas, retail, healthcare, professional service, and public sector. Currently at the moment, we have circa 50 EPM cloud customers. So it's a, a really substantial number. Um, we've got high levels of experience and we use best practice from each, in, each industry and pass it over to our customers as well. Um, as we've done that many projects, um, we do have vast amounts of experience integrating within multiple, multiple ERPs, whether that be on-premise, Oracle Cloud. We've got several customers who, we've in, who are SAP customers where we've integrated um, Oracle EPM Cloud and we've replaced BBC, SAP BBC as well. And then what you... Obviously, with Oracle EPM Cloud, you've got to understand that it's a journey. You can either do a big bang approach or you can go on a journey. So an example could be one of our customers recently implemented FCCS 
and then decided that they want to implement PBCS. And then they they were currently on Blackline and then decided to move from Blackline to Arcs to keep it in a sort of a, a one-stop shop for the EPM solution. Um, so that was a, a real impressive um, case study for ourselves. And now I'm going to hand over to Andy King, and he's going to take you through his journey. Thank you, John. Welcome, everyone. I uh, hope you're all well. Uh, an exciting day for uh, myself and John as England fans. I don't know if we've got any others on. World Cup Day, I've got to talk about football. It's a, it's a, it's a big thing at the moment. Uh, sorry for those of you who hate football. Um, welcome, as, as John said, I'm a director of, for uh, product management for EPM within Oracle. Uh, and I've been working a lot um, uh, for the last 12 to 18 months uh, around the whole piece around you know environmental, social and governance and the reporting elements. Okay, so we're working internally within Oracle around how we uh, if we think about that, our point of view and our product development strategy, uh, and then obviously, you know, working with, um, you know, partners and out in the community, if you like, uh, talking to all of our various customers. And so it's great today to be on with it with the Constellation uh, team. Uh, you can have a, a sneak uh, preview of, the, of their solution, which, uh, which looks superb. Hassan will take over from me shortly. But I thought what we try and do is just take you through the point of view that, that you know, we within Oracle really believe why EPM is the perfect fit for ESG. Okay, so why we're positioning this as that reporting tool for when we're thinking about the environmental, social and governance. So let, let me just take you through a, a few pieces of that. Hopefully uh, you may be um, familiar with enterprise performance management and our capabilities. You may have used Hyperion, the sort of legacy products around this area uh, from a finance point of view. But let me just talk about, you know, what that tooling does. And it's really about transforming that back office of finance or back office of operations when we're talking about performance management. And if we think about, you know, on this wheel on the right hand side here, we can talk about, you know, connecting all our planning. But that's always uh, an interesting bit to look at is, is planning forward. It's thinking about our long range, short range, midterm planning. It's also having a look at our actuals because to inform our planning, we need to have our actuals to understand our historic and our trends. Our closing with confidence, that whole report to record cycle, okay, from reconciliation all the way through pulling together our, our formal reporting, both internal and external, and ensuring that those are closed with veracity, with reconciliation, with all those pieces. All of that whilst we have the analytics and reporting required to get the insights that we want around our organization. And most importantly, outperforming with intelligence. What do we mean by that is we're all transforming. You know, I've worked in finance now for 30 years. I've been working with EPM for, for over 25 years. What we're trying to do is bring the right tools and the right skills to the people that matter. So those financing professionals, those operational professionals who are using the tools. And all the time then aligning that across the enterprise. It's no good if we just look at a siloed piece of the organization. It's about enterprise wide. Now, if you're familiar with the tools, you'll be thinking, well, we do that for financial reporting. You wouldn't look at a finance, you know, wouldn't try and do your financial reporting, both internal and external, on, you know, different areas, different tools. You can't do it on just your ERP. You can't do it just within Excel. You need to have a robust solution. And that's what enterprise performance management does. It provides that end-to-end -end capability that enables me to have a single source of truth about the data that we're reporting and then have the confidence to be able to share that either again internally or more importantly, externally for that statutory and regulatory purposes that, you know, that keeps us operating as an organization. So just with that in mind, when I come back to that perfect fit piece, that's me then just saying, actually, why would we not do the same when we're thinking about environmental, social and governance metrics? We know how important they are. We've seen the changes that are happening across the world in terms of uh, regulatory and statutory requirements. They're only going to, it's going to happen. Okay. So depending on the country that you're operating in and the countries you may have uh, elements in, you're going to have to start doing reporting if you haven't already done that. So how do you have that single source of truth where you can start to look at those long range plans about how do I look after all this data? How do I actually make plans in the organization to fulfill our ESG requirements? How do I start doing scenario modeling? What if? How do I have the right tooling that allows me to analyze that and understand it? And obviously then be able to have the tools that allow us to look at it internally and externally. 
So I'm going to bring that a little bit more to life with some stuff. And then the team absolutely, as I said, will we'll show you it uh, actually working properly. So, John, if you could move the slides on, please. So I mentioned in there about that single source of truth. It's still the key to what EPM is. OK, we bring together data from across the organization. We clean it. We allow you to supplement it and perform the processes you need. So ingest data from multiple ERPs, uh, multiple systems, convert it into something that's common, add it together, and then enable you to report that single source of truth. So if we think about environmental, social, and governance, we think about the, the, the pieces behind that, which is all around you know, the environmental impacts, uh, both in and external of our organization. The social impacts you know, around our workforce, how we're working within the communities, how we're working within our organization and the governance behind that. How do we train people? How are we delivering those areas? To get that, we're going to have to look at way more systems than we're used to. Okay, so for finance, generally it's going to be a bit, it's generally ERPs with maybe a bit of HR, okay, you know, for the sort of core financial reporting. We think about free SG, you're going to have to start to look wider for that data, okay, because it's emissions based data. It's going to be, you know, supply chain information. Obviously, HR still sales information, IT, all those pieces coming together. So we need something that can handle that rapidly. And so John, if you could move us on a slide, please. Because actually there's a huge value to what we're trying to do here. And if you've, you know, again, you may well be, you know, quite advanced in looking into your ESG requirements, or you may be early in that cycle, okay? But, you know, from what we're doing, when we're speaking to the customers and we're speaking to them all around the world at all scales and sizes, okay? But I think, you know, the, the, the real piece around this is there's a value to it. It shouldn't be seen as just an overhead of having to do business. And, oh, my God, we've got to do more statutory and regulatory reporting. Because if you haven't already looked into this, there's actually going to be a real value to what we're doing in terms of, you know, reducing cost of capital. We're already seeing that, you know, in terms of if you're going to look for capital and funding, you know, uh, you know if you have a better ESG you know, score or view, then you're potentially going to have you know reduced cost to capital that links into that investor confidence and you know interestingly i don't know you know who we got on the, on the calls but you know i've got elder teenage children they've never taken a, a ounce of interest in what i do funnily enough when i talk around the dinner table a little bit about esg and what i'm doing you know globally around that for the first time ever they're taking interest because the next generation especially are very very acutely interested in this subject area and so you know you can see that as that's going to come into that that buyer confidence and that pricing protection so you know again apologies if you're you know very far along and understanding this but you know we're seeing you know a, a variety of pieces and there's some studies there from you know mckinsey and gartner who are obviously uh, you know well established uh, john could you move me on please <clears throat> so how do we look at this so we think, you know, an early EPM, and, and John John talked about this in, in, the, in the intro, and he's absolutely spot on. With all of these solutions, there's a great way to deploy this quickly and rapidly and start to understand it. You know, for long, I come from a delivery background as a partner myself for many, many years. And, you know, one of the things I was very keen on is landing EPM really quickly, getting the users adopted, it, adopted on it, have that single source of truth and be able to then quickly identify where you have gaps. Okay, where you have issues. Is it a particular country? Is it a particular product or service line? You know, what is, where are the gaps? And using EPM allows you to do that. So we think, you know, an early solution is, in, you know, is putting in that, that framework, and it could be planning, that allows you to then start to pull together that single source of truth. So from that data integration, you know, again, the heritage of the products from Oracle is all about getting data from anywhere. OK, we know that's what they've grown up on. Over 50 percent of our customers, for instance, on EPM run SAP. OK, this is not Oracle on Oracle, guys. This is ingesting data from anywhere in the, organize, uh, in the organization across any area. Picking up then your benchmarking, because a part of ESG is about benchmarking against yourself, against peers, against, uh, you know, a country spe spe specific, uh, as well as your frameworks. So again, if you're not a common with this, this is the frameworks that have started to be adopted. There are many of them that allow you to pull together those ESGs. And, and you'll, as an organization, define the different ones that you may, may want uh, to use in there and pull them together. So it's about bringing something really quickly together, start that single source of truth, 
give me the ability to process and validate the data, plan it, analyze, report, all those pieces you can see in the middle of the screen, and give you that reporting capability. Important piece, no good having a single source of truth if I can't use it outside of where I am. So quickly and rapidly deploy something that enables me to get start that single source of truth. John, if you could move me on, please. Because what we see then is if we think from the bottom up, it's getting that speed. Mm -hmm. Let's capture and plan the information. Let's pull it together. Let's start to analyze and report on it. Then as we mature with that solution and mature with our thinking around ESG, let's bring in that growth level, that data control, the process control, quite really important. How do I control the process of collecting those areas? A really interesting part of conversations having with some of the biggest companies in the world or around that area. How do I bring a metric in? How do I ident identify it, certify it, bring it into my ESG reporting and then start capturing it? May need to do some allocations of data. We may have data just sitting at head office, but need to push that out, et cetera. And then lastly, the auditable bit, the important bit is starting to bring it reconcile, to be able to prove those numbers and be able to be sure of putting them out into the world. And a big part of um, ESG, interestingly, is about tax and treasury. Forms a big part of, 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 of that area. And so we need to have that robust capability there to be able to plan not only what our tax you know, um, you know, implications are our, 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 and, and the positions, but are we paying that fair tax in the local countries? So are we, you know, and that's again, a key part of sort of ESG, et cetera. So again, it's an evolutionary approach, exactly as John said at the start, you know, and it's about, you know, how EPM has been very well delivered for many years, you know, when we look at any sort of lens of, you know, financial or non-financial data. Uh, so John, can you move me on, please? And so actually, it's one of the strongest positions for those of you who understand, you know, the suite and, and the whole capability of enterprise performance management. It's about having that end-to-end -end piece. And so the change here in the middle is, is about being able to adopt everything that we need. So we talked about there in, in the previous slide about being able to grow with it. And that is the same principle. Let's grow with the solution, bring in the right tools and the right skills and right capabilities as we need them, as we mature into a, a full-blown solution, exactly as the majority of our EPM customers have. So the big customers in the world, um, and not necessarily, and I don't mean these, these as they're massive companies, but the big customer users of our EPM capability have all done that in a deployed basis in stages, as John said up front. Okay, some have gone big bang, okay, and they have done that, but the majority have done it in steps as they've needed to and added pieces on as they've seen the value. So we can get to that mature suite uh, delivery. So John, if you could uh, just pass me on. I've got. So my final piece, just, just kind of bringing this together, um, you know, we really believe that as you would for financial planning and for other areas of, of, of you know, reporting and capability, enterprise performance management really is the platform that gives you that single source of truth for ESG. It allows you to rapidly gain control of what's happening. You know, we're talking being able to understand those data very quickly, ingest it, smooth it, and then start to analyze it. As I say, find out where your gaps are, okay, and then be able to fill those gaps with various pieces. Then as you mature, start to grow, as you think about different KPIs, bring in more data, or start to plan forward and start to think, well, what initiatives do we put in play to maybe reduce our emissions, as an example? There may be a cost of that. Links back, closed loop back to our financial plan. And lastly, then giving us that auditable control so that when the statutory and regulatory requirements do hit, and they're going to hit in various times across the across the globe, you know, we're still waiting on the SEC to make their final in the US, make their final play. And I think that will drive a lot of behavior. But it's about, you know, that's going to be coming soon. So, John, if you could just, uh, my final slide. So, you know, just for me, you know, th this is how I talk about EPM. You know, in general, you know, if you can imagine it, you can build it. And I really do believe it's the right perfect fit. You know, it's about taking a suite and a platform that allows you to really develop forward and, uh, you know, stealing from the sustainability agenda about, you know, reducing your footprint of products that you use to do ESG reporting, reusing skills and, and, and capability, recycling that piece as we deploy through and get more agile and more mature. And most importantly, repeating the good practices that we learn as we're going through it. So I really do believe, you know, it's the right tooling. 
if you know uh, if you're looking at other tools around this area i think they complement around this but a dashboarding tool cannot do all of this on its own okay and i think you know i've seen a lot of organizations just looking at a bit of dashboarding to fulfill esg and that's a little bit you know i think we need to provide more so as usual i've talked more than i should have um john john and the guys that you know uh, uh, you know, very, very kindly uh, invited me here. Alejandro Costa Hassan now is going to show you a, a fabulous demo of what the guys have been building here at Constellation. Uh, I wish you luck and I'll be around. Uh, any questions, put into Q&A and I'll uh, happily uh, answer them. All right. Thank you very much, Andy, for that wonderful walkthrough. Um, my name is Hassan Erjan. I'm a manager with the Constellation Consulting Group, and I've been involved with numerous large scale um, EPM implementations. Um, in Oracle for the past oh, 12 years or so. Um, so today we'll be looking at a sample ESG reporting solution. It's more of a proof of concept based on a solution we're working on at a customer, but nonetheless, it'll be highly illustrative of the final solution and the overall platform capabilities. Um, the reporting application around ESG we'll be looking at is based on, again, Oracle EPM Cloud. And as Andy pointed out and explained uh, so well, it's, it's, it's really a testament to the flexibility of the platform as an overall modeling tool to accommodate different reporting needs across the entire EPM landscape. And with ESG being a recent topic, this platform is able to serve, we can really, we can really see the flexibility and, and robustness of the platform in Oracle EPM Cloud. This particular solution is based on um, the GRI, Global Reporting Initiative Requirements, but it's also available in other internationally established standards like SASB, the Sustainability Accounting Standards Board. And it can certainly be customized to tailor to other local ESG reporting standards as well. Um, so if we could move on to the next slide, John, please. Um, so this solution basically enables, as we said, collection of data, which is really the primary piece that goes into reporting from various data sources and also the ability to capture any necessary user entries like targets, which in turn are really used to form and monitor ESG KPIs and metrics. Now, this is the reporting piece, the actual piece, of course, on top of this reporting piece, one can then create long-term plans, then measure how ESG objectives will track in the future, and then finally create initiatives, concrete steps to meet the ESG targets in the future. Um, on the next slide, before we start talking about the solution, if you could move to the next slide, please. Um, let's quickly address the biggest question we always get, right? Which is how we can support the data before you can analyze it and report on it. As Andy pointed out, Oracle EPM Cloud has traditionally encompassed a very flexible integration framework that is source system agnostic practically. So a multitude of sources from various database technologies to data files to other source applications can easily be integrated into Oracle EPM Cloud. Uh, it also supports API-based integration. So if we think of it in an ESG reporting context, integrations with say IoT sources also become possible. Like we can think of collecting emissions data right from various IoT enabled sensors within an enterprise and report on that. Um, where data needs to be manually entered by end users, this can obviously be accommodated uh, for through the use of data entry forms. So overall, I would say the sourcing of the data has traditionally been inconsequential in Oracle EPM Cloud. And then the outputs of the solution, of course, are various reports um, that we can produce ESG disclosure reports, as well as improvement plans. Um, these can also be embedded into extended fp &A reporting context. And likewise, this data can be further incorporated in other EPM cloud processes, right? It's not just planning or PBCS. We have other solutions within EPM cloud that can readily consume this data and incorporate it. So with that said, I want to put up a web screen that's going to show you the application and we can go through our demo and walk through. Bear with me one second, please. So I hope that everybody can see my screen fine and I'm still audible. Um, yeah, next, we've got we'll, you here, Sam. <laughs> awesome. We'll spend some time next on a walkthrough of the, of the application and, and questions through the perspective of an organization involved in manufacturing. So we'll be looking at how a scorecard can be established to measure an organization's performance. Um, we'll look at how actual data on various environmental governance and social metrics can be reported on. And given the ESG performance of the organization, 
basically a natural continuation will be how an organization can improve with setting ESG targets and engaging in initiatives. Um, and then lastly, I'll be sharing with you an example of formatted reporting coming out of this. Um, so GRI, the Global Reporting Initiative, doesn't really prescribe a particular way of, or method to establish scoring on ESG metrics. But nonetheless, uh, the ESG data can be utilized basically to calculate a scorecard, which is exactly what we've done on four separate pillars in this application. So we have people, social, governance, and environment. So this basically provides the ability to quickly monitor the ESG landscape and provide a bird's eye view of the organization's performance in these separate areas. So these are called infolets in EPM Cloud. Um, they can be flipped to view a comparison with targets, as I will demonstrate. So we can use the actual scores versus what's targeted. And then we can also further flip each of these to see the historical trend in the, in the scoring. We can do the same with each and every one of those. So I'll jump back to the main screen. The purpose here is not to go into detail on navigating or using Oracle EPM Cloud, but very briefly on the platform itself. This is the web interface that's organized into customizable menus and submenus. So these are clusters and cards, uh, respectively. These can be used to house the necessary data forms and screens and dashboards and reports and whatever else is needed uh, mm -hmm. for the end users. So we're looking at a view from an ESG reporting administrator standpoint, so I can see everything, but the view and access, of course, can be considerably customized to accommodate different users or user groups based on the required roles and responsibilities. Um, so that's the navigation piece. There's also a dedicated area to the left where administrators can post announcements for users and users can basically add their desired application elements and content to a list of favorites. So just very brief two minute spiel on the navigation basics. Uh, starting with the ESG reporting piece, the metrics um, we have, have been organized under three clusters in the application, energy, social, I'm, I'm sorry, environment, social, and governance. So these are basically the three options you see on the main screen, which also correspond to the four pillars where we had seen scores earlier. So these will be providing a different set of ESG KPIs and metrics on each screen, uh, but otherwise they will be fairly similar in their structure. So I will be going through these progressively quickly. Uh, first, we'll be looking at some environmental reporting, um, starting with energy. So on this page, we look at a dashboard with several graphical representations showing various energy consumption metrics, right? You can see the other cards from the main screen at the top at a menu bar at this point. Um, we'll be looking at a large collection of such dashboards. I won't necessarily go through each in detail, but I do want to point out some selections or options you will inevit inevitably see on these dashboards called the point of view here at the, at the top of the screen. Um, here we have the ability to select different entities, for instance, within the organization, as well as the units of measure. So we can look at this particular metric in megawatt hours or megajoules. Um, of course, the security in EPM Cloud can be configured in such a way that the user for a particular entity would only get to see her entity. This is, again, an admin view with everything. Um, I also want to demonstrate when working with graphical dashboards, you can always maximize the main content area um, to cover the menu bar. And then you can maximize any one of these charts and graphs um, to cover the screen. And then restore it just a little bit more on the navigation piece. And then hovering over any part of a chart will also show you the data in numeric format. So it's not just the graph, but you can actually see the actual numeric uh, format of data um, on this page as well. So on this uh, page, the energy consumption uh, page, we have, have several metrics such as percentage of renewables within the total energy consumed in the organization, a historical trend of total energy consumption, a breakdown by type of direct and indirect energy consumed as part of operations and so on. Um, so not to go into the, a lot of detail, I will roll into some of the other pages. Um, under environment, we also have water consumption, which has other metrics like total water withdrawn, broken into the types of water, like cooling water, fresh water, non-fresh water, a historical trend of water consumed again, uh, and various other breakdowns of water consumption. So similar idea, again, we have a entity selection and we can have different units. We have this page configured to view thousand cubic meters, obviously. 
the waste management card basically displays various disposal and recycling related metrics, um, such as waste disposal amounts broken down by destination and hazardous versus non hazardous status, a trend of wastewater recycled over the years, and so on. And then the emissions tab shows direct, indirect, and CO2 emissions with, again, their relevant breakdown. So this is the content we have um, under environment. Going back to social, we'll see some social and people-related metrics and dashboards. So the employment card that we're seeing now actually has dashboards arranged in four tabs, you will see on the left-hand side of the screen. So this contains various employment-related metrics prescribed by GRI. Uh, so the first tab we're on obviously contains employee count by gender, age groups, whether they're existing or new, whether they're temporary or permanent. Um, on the second tab, which I'm navigating into now, uh, we can see a more detailed breakdown in the table of employees, as well as some turnover percentages to the right-hand side of the screen. The third tab lists employee retention and parental leave related numbers and percentages. And then, then the last one, we mostly see turnover related metrics broken down into genders and age bands or groups. So within social, next up is a section on training and education. And here we see total training hours by gender alongside training hours accumulated by employees and different employment categories. So we've broken down employees into several categories, middle management, senior management, administrative, technical production. Of course, this can be customized as needed. We also have a pie chart with an age breakdown of employees engaged in governance activities in the organization. On the remunerations card, we have diversity metrics on the first tab. So providing breakdowns of gender, age group, employment category, and so on. And then on the second tab, we see some compensation related numbers, um, salary and other benefits received by employees by gender, and some egality related scoring on the left with respect to compensation numbers. Health and safety presents the historical trend of the number of employees and reportable incidents, as well as some fatality figures at the bottom within the workforce. Next up on the suppliers card, uh, this tries to portray the overall social impact of the suppliers of the organization, not the organization itself. Um, here we can see some figures around suppliers with positive and negative effects and the number of suppliers screened, as well as numbers that have accepted improvement or otherwise have been terminated as supplier. And lastly, we have some social indicators showing the number of community involvement projects the organization has contributed to and the resulting number of people thereby impacted. We can also see the types of projects and historically how many people have been impacted. Um, we have some numeric presentation in the form of tables, as well as, as, as charts and graphs as well in this page. More ESG reporting under the governance section, which contains obviously governance as well as finance related indicators. I'll open governance indicators. Um, so this page contains a table showing number of substantiated and unsubstantiated um, whistleblower cases, we also have a breakdown of taxes paid uh, by the organization, whether it's corporate income taxes or tax salaries and benefits or indirect tax taxes paid on acquisition of inputs. Um, and there are some additional governance related metrics at the bottom of this page. And then lastly, financial, this page contains select lines from the organization's income statement laid out comparatively for the past uh, five years, both in numeric and graphical representations. Um, on the bottom right, we have a total cost of sales broken down into its components of direct materials, direct labor, packaging, and energy. It kind of gives you the mix of what goes into the cost of manufacturing or, or sales. Um, and then lastly, on the top right, we have an added value presentation, which is an interesting view depicting the value that organization adds to the various participants in the economy. So this can be thought of as an alternate view of the PL 
um, starting with net income. So the net income would obviously represent the value that's added to shareholders or stakeholders in the organization. Personnel expenses would represent the value flowing um, to the employees in, in the form of compensation. Taxes would be the value or benefit to the government sector. Uh, financial expenses, of course, would be what flows to banks and lending institutions. So I hope this gave a good flavor of what you can do with ESG metrics once you source the data to, from an actual reporting perspective. Um, so now that we've taken a look at these various metrics to see how the organization is performing in these areas, the obvious deduction or next step is how do we make meaningful use of the information to achieve improvement in these areas? That's the whole point of having this platform is to be able to make strategic decision-making, whether it's in a financial sense or an ESG sense. So to that end, now we'll be looking at an example on how targets can be set to achieve that set improvement right, and to be able to determine what concrete actions to take. Um, so we'll be, look at, we'll be looking at target setting and then we'll also be looking at finally an example of laying down some concrete steps of initiatives that will result in improvement to the organization's ESG footprint. Um, so let me bring up a target setting example. Um, so the target setting example we'll be looking at now contains a reduction scenario in oil emissions. Again, you can configure the system to carry out a target um, setting exercise for other metrics, both environmental and non-environmental. Um, but we'll be looking at a, 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 an example in oil emissions. And again, we can have different entities for this. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have a chart showing the actual trend of oil emissions indicated by the green line. We can clearly also see the impact of some seasonality in the actual trend. Uh, and the blue line is a forecast or estimation of future emissions. Um, talking about future emissions, the future emissions are forecasted based on the sales revenue which is the piece you see in the middle of the screen. So the green lines in this table represent the actual, and the blue lines would be the forecast um, for sales and emissions in annual amounts. So we can forecast our sales revenue based on the actual trend, and then that can be used to predict the CO2 emissions in the first column. Again, this is the modeling platform. Sales revenue emissions in production go hand in hand. A model can be built to, to make that prediction. Um, and then this prediction in emissions of CO2 is then reflected in this chart as the blue line and the appropriate seasonality has also been taken into account for this prediction. Um, so this is the expectation, the blue line and future emissions under the status quo if no action is taken with respect to reducing emissions. We also have a red line showing the target emissions level the organization aims to reach. Um, we can adjust the target within EPM again easily by running a set target command. So let's just say we want to reduce emissions by the end of fiscal year 30, 2030 to 500 and that's in 1000 tons CO2. Um, this is the annual target. We'll run this command. And we will see the red line shift, which represents basically a um, linear reduction in the emissions so that we reach our target, which is a monthly value. That's basically the 500 we keyed in uh, divided by 12 by the end of our um, outlook period. And then on the far right side, basically, we can then observe how much reduction needs to be targeted in um, emissions reductions monthly and annually in order to reach the target, given this forecast. Um, and then lastly, we can also see the current emission mix displayed as a pie chart and this is to aid in decision-making to reduce further emissions. So this is a very simple example of how the platform can be used, not just to report, but also set some targets and um, how that those targets can be achieved based on certain models. Lastly, we'll look at an initiative example. And the initiative screen is where individual courses of action can be planned, again, tailored to the organization, obviously, 
which will ultimately improve the organization's sustainability in environmental, social, or governance tiers. So here we already see a, a screen with three initiatives listed along with um, a detailed description of each in the second column, what the targeted level or quantity is for that initiative, uh, the forecast level, if no action is taken with respect to that initiative, the start and target dates for the initiative, and then the overall positive impact aimed to be achieved by that initiative. We can also assign a priority from a display standpoint, and then we can also model what the annual cost of implementing that particular course of action would be like over the course of that initiative. So let's just as an example, assume we wanna have two further initiatives within this organization. Um, one would be to basically establish building more solar panels. Let's assume we wanna build 100,000 square meters worth of solar panels on company premises. We can again, use the platform to model this. Um, so the, the initiative type, again, this can be tailored and customized, let's say it's building solar panels, and we want to build 100,000 by the end of 2030. We want to start doing that right away. You can also enter an appropriate description here. And that initiative will be listed on this uh, list, um, along with what the impact of having this much solar paneling um, would yield in terms of reduction in CO2 emissions in tons. And then we can also model uh, an overall PNL impact of how much it would cost to implement it. Um, I'll do one more just as an example. Um, we looked at some compensation related numbers and let's say we had a pay gap between male and female employees and we're going to close the gender gap and that can also be modeled. Um, obviously, we wouldn't want any difference um, in compensation. And again, say we want to achieve this by the end of 2030 and we're going to start right away. And again, we can enter description. And again, this can be added to the list of initiatives. Obviously, it's not going to have an impact in terms of reducing emissions, but on the left, we can model the PNL impact of doing this, um, just as examples on how the tool can be used to model um, and predict and forecast based on the actual data that's being collected. So I hope this has been a an illustrative. Um, demo of the platform capabilities and how the solution um, looks like in the field of ESG. Uh, one last thing I want to mention, and I'm going to um, throw up a formatted report on the screen for this, is the reporting strength of the platform. Um, yes, collecting data is very important. Being able to accurately model and predict is very important. But presenting the output in uh, formatted reports is also essential, and that's what that's been a traditional strong point of the platform as well. So just as an example, lastly, I want to throw this up on the screen. You can bear with me for one for a minute. So I'm not going to run through this in any detail, but this is an example of um, what 
the application can provide in terms of reporting. So numeric and narrative elements can be presented in a formatted booklet based on the data that's been sourced in the application and modeled in the application. So these kinds of formatted booklets can be compiled out of Oracle EPM Cloud. So that's all I had. I would like to conclude at this point with a demo and then I'll hand it back over to John. Uh, oh, thanks very much, Hassan and Andy. Um, really appreciate your time and efforts. Um, now we can, that's the end of the, the demo and uh, the, the presentation. Do you, does anybody have any questions that you'd like to ask the team at the moment? If you want to just put it in the, in the chat or raise your hand. Seems like we've practically covered everything. There's not many questions coming through the chat at the moment. Okay then. Well, if there's no if there's no more questions, um, I'd just like to say on behalf of Constellation Consulting Group and Oracle, thanks very much for your time um, this morning or this afternoon. Depends where you are in the world. And if you do need any support regarding your ESG reporting or any Oracle EPM cloud support, please do reach out to myself or one of the team and we're more than happy to support you moving forwards. Okay, thanks very much for your time. Thank you guys, thank you, John. Thank you. Sir. Thank you everyone. Thank you all for your time.